I kind of realized one day when I thought about my life, I was just like, I got to live my life for myself. That's why I came up with Nothing Grows Overnight, because you right. have to put time into it and um, just give it some water and some love and eventually got to let it grow. I don't want to live a what if story. Hi everyone, I am Hannah, the host of Brewery Pod, and today uh, we have a very special guest on. Guys, this is Con No. You guys might recognize him from the Hype series on HBO Max. You might recognize him because you saw him at Complex Con, but he is the owner, founder, head designer of Made & Co. Gallery, as well as Nothing Grows Overnight, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay, for sure. And so, yeah, when I say designer, I mean fashion designer, if you guys can't already tell from oh the fit yeah. i guess to just get things started can we get a fit check fit check yeah okay. yeah, yeah bottom uh, to top bottom to top please really light really light uh i got the beffy union ones sick i love the white and natural ones and the ones that they retro was really bad the 85s one was great and then she did these so shout out to beffy and union oh yeah um uniqlo i got these actually in new york like last week I like Uniqlo. I think they sell like really good basics. Oh yeah, um, staples for sure. The, lately, the only white tee I've been wearing is Uniqlo, so this might be a Uniqlo ad. Um, <laughs> I got a Nothing Grows Overnight um, football jersey that I'm dropping soon. Ooh, um, it's dope. It says Growth in Time. Mm -hmm. Has the number six on there. Uh, the the meaning behind the number six is like I'm the sixth child out of seven kids. So I'm number six. I'll no way. Yeah, I've been rolling with six lately. So that and then. Um, just the L.A. fitted with the turquoise stones. Kind of like one-on-one -on -one situation I made for myself to wear. Fire. So. I was like, oh, can, um, I, can I get one of those? <laughs> yeah, I'm dropping some, some hats this Friday. So it's like the white and green. I actually did a hat with New Era. So I'm putting that one out as well. Oh, so, sick. Yeah. But yeah, and so I feel like I am a fashion enthusiast yeah. and just like a culture enthusiast. And so I feel like we have those things in common. Um, but you know, you rep Ohio a lot. I see that you got a little Ohio necklace on. Yeah, got the Vietnam chain on. Shout out to Phantom and Co. Ooh. Uh, they made the, the chain for me, uh, mm -hmm. which I, you know, I've been helping out with some jewelry stuff as well. Um, we did a, like a, a giveaway situation. Okay. So I gave away one of my outfit industry bomber jackets and, um, Ooh. this Vietnam chain. As wow. Well. Oh, so Solid cool. gold. Uh, it has like a little diamond where I'm from, which I got to tell JP to fix that because I barely can see the diamond. But Yeah, yeah, you got to highlight highlight it a little you know, bit more. So I got to highlight him about that. Like, you know, maybe, yeah. I'll, maybe once things go right, I'll bust it down. But for now, I, I'm really liking just wearing solid gold and just light pieces, nothing too crazy. Right, right. Uh, I like less is more. You know, Ooh. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elevated basics. I feel like that's been a thing. Yeah. Um, and so were you born in Vietnam? Yes. Yeah, I was born in Vietnam. Um, I came to America when I was like four. Oh, okay, okay. So um, my family actually, out of all the places, they moved to Columbus, Ohio. Right. Um, initially, it would have been like L.A., like Orange County area. I got an aunt out there. Mm -hmm. And then my mom met this guy. He was just like, you got a really big family. Again, right, seven total, kids. It's not, not, yeah, seven kids, total of nine in the family, including my parents. So he felt like Columbus, Ohio might be a better place for us to raise our families. A lot slower than L.A., obviously. Mm. Um, but I had an aunt that actually lived in Columbus, Ohio, which that's the reason why I came to Columbus, Ohio. Oh, okay, And um, okay. I got to admit, I really love being from Columbus, Ohio. I love being from Ohio. really gave me the swagger and who I am, it molded me to be who I am today. Yeah. Um, so I do appreciate being from the Midwest and definitely... Being from Columbus, Ohio, for sure. Right, right. Because, I mean, me, I'm f I'm like kind of from here. I was born in Colorado, so a little random. But oh, kind of shout out to Deion Sanders. Oh, know? yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, yeah, kind of a similar story. Um, like, I think we had family out there. And so when my parents immigrated, uh, we just ended up What's your background in Colorado. Again? So I'm Korean. Okay, cool, um, cool. Yeah. And then I have one younger sister, so not as big of a family So when as did you, you move to California? So I moved in like fourth grade. So it's okay, so been... you kind of like pretty much grew up in California. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. That's like, what's up. Yeah, I'm, I'm an LA kid. I think I need to leave because I just. It's funny. I always meet someone and they're like, "Oh, I'm from Miami," but then like they're not actually. They, they actually like moved out of Miami when they're like six years old. Oh. So I'm like, no, you can't say you're from Miami. Right. You grew up in like 
whatever. Like if you grew up in like Indianapolis, that's where you're from. But right, right, exactly. So you got to take yeah. pride in it. Yeah, yeah. So you're actually, you know, you're an LA kid. That's that's what's up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and so you know, moving to Ohio, and you had mentioned how you got a lot of like your swagger from there. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, can you just like tell us a little bit about like, you know, what it's like growing up in Columbus? Because to be quite Man, honest, Columbus. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, so Columbus <laughs> is like a really like, I would say it's unique. Um, honestly, my upbringing is a lot different. Like I grew up in government housings and stuff. So growing up, like I grew up in a hood. You know what I mean? I grew been around like, like my inspiration growing up was seeing like dope boys and stuff. Cause like they always had like the latest sneakers and like right. Jordans. And then like, you know, my era is a little different. I'm like, I'm like grew up in like a, like early, early like 2000 areas you know what i'm saying so like i used to like mm. be fascinated with like dipset a lot like when i was growing up and then um and actually cameron oh. used to come to columbus ohio oh. i believe it or not he was in ohio a lot so i got a lot of that inspo through that point then we have a new era of resurgence while we're growing up was then you see kid cuddy right kid mm. cuddy is bringing that era kind of like being more i would say like we were more on top of the brands like we were always like Oh, what are the people in New York are wearing? Or, like, what's popping in L.A.? What's popping on West Coast? Or, you know, the Bape era with Nigo. Like, oh, oh what's right. popping in Japan? Yeah. Um, I can say, like, it's different now. Every neighbor, every place that you live in now, it's like, it's it depends on the community of, like, the group of kids are hanging around. You, like, and find different niches. Exactly. Yeah, right. And I got to right. say, like, as uh, when I was younger, I was really inspired by Cameron and, like, Dipset and wearing, like, New Era and, like, mm. like Jeff Hamilton's and, like, the bandanas and all that stuff wearing pink. And then it's kind of like a resurgence of seeing Kid Cudi. Aww. So, like, seeing that Kid Cudi resurgence was, like, very, like, new and, like, wow, it's just this dude that's, like, from Cleveland, Ohio, and now he's with, like, good music. You know, he's with Ye. We already know oh, about yeah. who Kid Cudi is now. But Kid Cudi honestly changed my life, you know. Mm. Um, Kid Cudi is actually one of the reasons why I went to art school and just, you know, thought about, like, being this fashion designer and, and such because I, I felt like at the time where, like, when I heard Man on the Moon, I was just like, this shit is so next level, it just changed my life. And then yeah. when I found out, like, some kid from Ohio was signed with Kanye and good music, like, I felt like, yo, if he can do it, I had that thing, like, yo, I think I can do it too. So, right. um, yeah, shout out to Kid Cudi, big inspiration in my life. Like, he really, like, opened up that door. And then I remember one day just listening to, like, um, Kanye's graduation album. There's a song called, like, I Wonder. And then that, that was that moment I was just playing that song. And I just realized, like, if I really want to do this, I got to just, like, really do it. So I enrolled, went to art school for fashion design. and uh-huh, uh-huh. So I took the... I guess the traditional route. Um, right, right. You know, my, my mom's dream was to see me graduate college. So at the time, I was just jumping around doing community colleges, might transfer Ohio State, just figuring things out. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, that's when I made a realization, like, if I want to do something or major in something, right, I want to do something I actually want to do. I feel right. like a lot of people get themselves into, like, degrees and, you know, places, you know, occupations and stuff. They're not really that happy. Um, right. It's, like, more so, like, Oh, I know this will make me money. Oh, I know this is like stable, yeah, 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 so I'm gonna go this way. Yeah, exactly. So I kind of wanted to do something that uh, I felt like could make me happy, and um, it's a journey, right? This yeah. design world is it's tough. It's not like it's not as easy, but I feel like you have like the niche, or you have the eye for it, you have the talent, you have the network. Um, anything can happen, you know what right. I'm saying? So right, yeah. and so you know, I think like now more than ever. I see brands popping up left and right, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, you printed you printed a design on a t-shirt. Very cool. Um, and so being that there's, like, so much saturation within the market, within streetwear especially, right? We're in the market of resellers where I just, I literally can't get my hands on anything. Like, right, I'm like, right. you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to back off completely. Right. How are you, like, standing out and, like, innovating as a brand? Um, my thing is, first and foremost, I've always believed in community. Right? I feel like um, a lot of people put themselves into a mental breakdown or a mental cycle where they think about, oh, shit, like they're people are so focused on what other people are doing. Yeah. Right? Or like, oh, man, this brand or it's popping off or like, you know, yay wore this or somebody lit wore some brand and then. Some people feel like, oh, I'm not as cool because I don't have this person, this brand. Right. But right. reality is, is like, if you can create a community of, let's just say, like 50 people that really love your stuff and wants to support, mm. like, 
that's what you should focus on, that 50 or 100 people. Ooh, I love that. And then eventually it will grow. Yeah. Right? And I think with me is that, like, um, I'm extremely confident in my vision of design. Like, I really feel like I'm, like, the best designer ever. Like, I can always think of something new. Yeah. Um, I'm always thinking of something unique, something that stands out. Um, but I feel like that's what you have to have, mm. right? I feel like if you don't have the confidence in selling a product. Right. Like, if I sell you a T-shirt, like, I don't knock a graphic T-shirt. I think, like, graphic tees are very important. Right. Uh, when I designed at Urban Outfitters, um, the graphic T-shirt held the company together. Oh, for sure, um, yeah. Even when I worked at Levi's, designing denim at Levi's, like, our graphic tee department really was paying a lot of the bills. Right. Obviously, the men's denim was just a big part of it, but, you know, the graphics team, that was a big chunk of the company. Right. Um, so my thing is, at the end of the day, we're like, if I'm going to sell you a T-shirt, my job is to make you want to feel cool or, like, you want that shirt. Um, um, but sometimes people buy the hype, right? So, like, maybe right. some, so-and-so wore it and it just blew up. It's just the luck to draw that person had the hype behind them. Right, right. Um, but I feel like if you continue to kind of, like, give people something and you stay consistent, they can be like, oh, wow, this person don't miss or this person is always putting something cool out, cool out, cool out. So, like... Throughout the end, there's going to be the supporters, of Ooh. course. And then, obviously, you have the opportunities with, like, collaborations, brands looking at you, um, mm -hmm. opportunities, right? Just, like, um, certain places reaching out for you to do a pop-up. You know, put that all in the mix. And then sometimes it's, like, that's why I came up with Nothing Grows Overnight, because everything doesn't, like, nothing happens overnight. Right, you right. You have to put time into it and um, just give it some water and some love, and eventually you got to let it grow. Right, for sure. I think, like... You know, me too, being like a creator, a content creator, right? It's easy to like compare myself to literally everyone. I'm yeah. like, oh, they're, they're doing something sick. Like, oh, they got this deal. And so I think it's just been like about like being consistent because I think it's not really a matter of like if it'll happen. It's a matter of when, as long as you keep going. Right, and so, right. you know, I'm sure like as a designer, I know you have like confidence and whatnot, but when you do get into like those like modes of doubt, how are you like pulling yourself out or like, how are you like working through it or are you yeah. leaning into it? Like, like, like who is Khan when he needs to like get himself out of a rut? I don't know. I, I, I think a lot of times I do, it's not really that good sometimes, but I do talk to myself a lot. Mm. And, me um, too, me too. <laughs> and I sit there and I think like, there's sometimes, I'm not going to lie, like there's a drop where I'm like, fuck. This shit did not sell as I thought it would be. Mm. Just kind of like, I think to me, I look at it like, got to keep going, got to right. keep going. Um, but there are sometimes you don't, I do sit there and I'm like, fuck, like, I kind of want to give up. Or like, I kind of want to like, what am I doing this for? Right, or like, like, do I got to pivot? Yeah, like, yeah. And then I think that's when you got to really realize like, what am I doing wrong? What can I do to do better? Mm -hmm. Um. And, you know, right now I'm thinking, like, I'm doing so much. And, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, building a team. Who do I reach out to? Um, right. i got a manager situation. Next thing you know, you got to look into PR. But then again, it's like everything is also, like, things cost money, right? So sometimes you got to also look at, like, what can you afford or right. maybe what your friends can do for you. Right. right. Like, oh, if I know someone that's doing this, maybe I'll reach out to them. Mm -hmm. I'm always good at, like, reaching out to people and asking questions. And most of the times, it's like, people just show love. If you kind of give love, like, you have a loving energy and you mm -hmm. show, like, love, you mm -hmm. get love back. That's how I always look at it. Like, okay, like, people just show love. And Ooh. I guess when you're genuine and you kind of stay solid, people going to fuck with you. Right. And just hold you down, for sure. Right. I love that. Because, yeah. you know, I think... I have a big issue with like asking people for help. Like, I think it just like comes from like being independent and like doing a lot of things on my own. Like I'm the oldest of two. And so I've spent a lot of my life taking care of other people. And so whenever I like, like, so and like, Mm, ask ask for a favor or like call in a favor i always just like feel bad about it do you ever get those feelings or are you just like nah never, never. Huh, okay okay i feel like people's downfall is when they feel that way Ooh. Yeah, i feel like i remember when i was young i can i remember i mentioned school i didn't know who this kid was and i needed help and i started speaking vietnamese to this kid uh oh so i was just like oh shit 
I was like, oh, he does, you know, like, it's like a language bear. I didn't realize that. But as a kid, I've always realized that if I need to ask a question, if I'm lost, yeah, or if I need help, I'm going to ask. I've it's always been an cool. asking person. So, yeah. like, even in school, mm. well, like, when I'm learning, like, for instance, like, my first semester of fashion school was tough because, like, we didn't. You know, I'm a menswear designer, but most of the stuff we're learning is all women's stuff. So, like, mm. I was taking draping classes. In the very beginning, I was kind of like you. Like, I was so, it wasn't my ego, but I was so, like, out of place. Right. I was like the only male in the room. Yeah. And I was, like, afraid to ask questions because I just was in an unknown territory. Right. I didn't know what was going on. Right, right. And this is what happened. My projects, my grades, I'm like oh, shit, like, you know, pattern making class and, and, and draping class, I was getting, like, a C, mm. C plus. I'm like, whoa. Like, I really like was, str- I'm struggling. Yeah. I'm really struggling. Yeah. And then that's when I realized, like, there's nothing wrong with asking for help or maybe staying later in class and seeing the teacher can show you something after class or you connect and talk to your other classmates. Uh. When I first started, um, you know, going into my can. My construction classes. I didn't know how to thread a Juki industrial sewing machine. Don't even. Oh, okay, okay. Like Things threading clicked. it. I like, didn't know how to yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah. I was sewing bears. Like I would have my homegirl Olivia, and she would do it for me. Oh. And then eventually I had conflict. Like, yo, can you show me how to do this? Right. And it right. took for me to record it too. Like I took my iPhone out, recorded it. Right. And this is like I was like I just need to have the visual be saved yeah and for then sure. you know it it's those type of steps where mm. it took for me to not even learn how to thread a machine yeah to now knowing how to use the machine from sewing i can just sew about anything Ooh, yeah but if it wasn't for me asking questions i could have been stubborn and still been stuck and i it's not about like i wouldn't be able to learn that fast but i felt like the process of learning it would have instead of me learning how to thread the machine in like a week or two right maybe it would have took me like three or four months right you right. never know so it, i feel like Sometimes asking for help can shave off a lot of time. For Ooh, well. yeah, I like that. That yeah. also like kind of relates back to your entire idea of like community, right? Like yeah. not only are you having to like reach out to people um, because they support your brand, but also like use the community around you. Because right, we all got talents, exactly. we all have resources. We all, we're all here to help each other out. And I feel yeah. like that's what you said. Like community is very important because. You never know. I might hit you one day like, hey, I'm, I want to do a podcast. Like, what should I do? What, right. what, what kind of mic should I get? Um, what program should I get? Right, uh, right. And you can help me out. And then, yeah. and then you're like, hey, but as far as like building that following, that's on you. That's when you build your own podcast community or whatever the case may be. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, asking questions is very important. Like, because that's the only way um, you can figure it out or learn or even, you know, sometimes you might ask the questions to correct the question. You never know. You mm. know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Oh, oh, ask the question to correct the question. Yeah, because yeah. I think a lot of times when you don't know enough, you're not asking the right questions. Correct. correct. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Got it. I got it. I guess you got to say, like, move like an immigrant. Like, we're immigrants. Mm-hmm. Like, we just got to, like, I'm telling you, when our parents first came to America, they didn't know shit. They had to ask questions. Right. Like, how do I get into this train or where's my address? Right. Like, you know, how they got my mom and dad has seven kids. They We trying to figure out where we live at. They right. sent. They just give you an address. Right. Like, they you ain't have no maps. Map like you know you can't even put on your Apple iPhone exactly. to figure out where you at. You got to go through a whole big ass map to figure out where you live at. You might go right. to the wrong neighborhood and go with a whole bunch of family. You got to ask questions. Right. Or right. some people be like, you know what? Instead of me figuring out, hey, can you take my family to where we have to be at? And yeah. We don't know exactly the area. Can you show us? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So sometimes you got to ask questions. For sure. Yeah. I think. You know, having an immigrant mentality, I was like actually just thinking about how like I think my grind season is now. Like right, I think right, right. grind comes in like seasons for me just because like I'll like burn myself out. But like I think when you're an immigrant, like you don't have you don't have options like that. You know, you don't like I'm telling you when I tell people the same, like just imagine you, you have to be in that position where you you just be over there. You have to live there and you have to learn this. Language. Right. Right. It's like. Yeah, you're going to be trying to figure this shit out. Yeah. So I just always think, like, that's how I look at life is always figuring something out. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's just like, I think it's probably because I see my family and my siblings and stuff and mm. just seeing how they figure out life. Mm. And I'm at a point where I have more of a luxury than them because I felt like I'm doing something I love. Mm. And, you know, I think they really kind of love what they're doing now. I'm not saying they don't, but I feel like there's 
that sacrifice of being the ones where like like being the, like you being an Otis, where it's like you got to do something a little bit more safe because if the family is dependent on you, you can't really like you know you got to take time to sure. to be able to do something you really like. Instead of me, I just went straight to it. You know, what I'm right, right. Yeah. And so you know, kind of choosing maybe like a little bit more of an untraditional career path. Though you did go to school, like did you ever get like feedback from your parents or even like your older siblings who did yeah. have to like you know take more responsibility yeah, it, was tough. it was tough um i never really got like that full obviously never got that full family support mm-hmm. um so it was really tough but i came to realize one day when i thought about my life i was just like i gotta live my life for myself i can go to school to be a nurse or engineer or you know whatever you your parents assume for you to go to school for law or pharmacist. And it's like, if you don't have the passion for it, why go for it? Because sometimes it's like with me, my, my brain is such at a ADHD level because I'm just so creatively like a creative thinking person. Right. So it's we're like, yeah, I can't even sit in a like pharmacist type of class (laughs) or like any like, extra science classes and learn about different like atoms and like molecules molecules, like (laughs) this you know this chemical does this when you enhance this and like i'm probably gonna sit there and be so fucking lost right what the fuck is going on right right i mean some people will sit through and do it because they want to make their parents happy right but it's just like i don't know i just didn't want to be in a point in my life where i'm like 39 working at a pharmacy fam pharmaceutical office and i'm like making decent money but it's like i'm like stuck in columbus ohio and in some random uh, suburb yeah but like damn i just burnt like my damn 30s and i'm yeah. stuck in like some random hit town right Your but the ones that are really like truly in love with being a doctor and saving lives it's like i feel like that's what they're meant to be on this planet like you're meant right. to come to you know save and and help people and stuff like that it's a beautiful thing oh yeah like, to be able to see the person put in all that work to be able to get to where they are to learn how to deliver a child or right. even the next person to find a cure for cancer or X, Y, and Z. It's like, it's a beautiful thing. I'm not mad at it. I just feel like if your heart is not in it, then, mm-hmm. you know, try to figure out what can make it better mm-hmm. as well, you know? Yeah. But I've always believed that age is only, honestly, I've always said age is only a, a number because I feel like, um, there are people that find their success at the age of 21, 28, mm-hmm. 32. And there's people that just find their success and happiness when they're like 50. Right. You know, so, you know, don't ever measure it through age. Cause I feel like there's people, I call it the late bloomers. Like their life is meant to change and make themselves happy later in life. Yeah. And it's not happening right now. But yeah. that's, that's, that's totally fine. Yeah, no, for sure. I definitely, like, used to compare myself a lot, especially because, like, slowly I'm seeing, like, friends get married and, like, right, friends start, like, successful businesses. But I think, like, constantly reminding ourselves that, like, we're on time for our own life has been, like, very helpful, right, of just, like, yeah, I can, I can, like, take my time. Like, what is the rush? Because, yeah, it's, like, time is finite, and I, like, value time very preciously, but at the same time, I want to, like, enjoy the process of it, right? Like, it's, like, yeah. so cheesy, but, like, the journey, you know? Yeah, it's kind of funny because my mom is, like, 70-something. My mm. mom lives, like, two different lives because mm. um, she had us so late, but I remember my older siblings would, like, complain about us, and then my mom would just... My mom is so real. She was just, like... You can't really compare your life to your younger siblings because your life was set pretty like, you know, right after high school. It's like they got into their jobs and started their own, you know, nail degree and went and started doing nails and now owning business. And, mm-hmm. you know, like they started their entrepreneurship very early. Oh, yeah. And then my mom was like, but your siblings, they their generation is different. Like they have to invest so much in school yeah they leave school then they have to move away or they have to find a place for opportunities for jobs and they start their life later than you guys Mm. right and it's just like it's two different type of generations right and i feel like our generation is a little bit more like you know trying to figure out trying to get to where they want to be if you're either going to school or after school you know, if you want to climb up that corporate ladder or you want to be an entrepreneur, right. there's all these steps. And then eventually, you know, everyone's marrying each other a little bit later. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. that case may be. But I feel like 
it's just our this i just you gotta be realistic and understand the, the, the demographics and the generations we live in right and sometimes that's just how it is or if you really you know if you want to get married soon or early there's nothing wrong with that right but just you know make sure it's the right decision For that sure. you want to make because I, I do see some people that are in some unhappy marriages and stuff like that and there's nothing wrong like starting over again but i feel like with everything you do make sure you understand what yourself what you're, what you're getting yourself into mm -hmm. and what also you haven't done yet like right oh. like oh like maybe some people want to try to live in three four major cities before they get married and understand right. like oh like i want to try this city or move here or move there like that corporate ladder where people are jumping around it's just like it it slows it's down their time. whole thing of like finding a significant other uh, and, and stuff like that too so yeah it's weird. Everybody's life is, like, totally different. In yeah, sense. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, like, speaking about dating and all of that, um, you know, something I've been thinking about recently has been how I, like, see a pattern in, like, guys of they feel like they need to, like, quote, make it before they get into anything serious. Do you, like, kind of, like, fall in that same boat? Like, where do you kind of, like, stand with all that? You know what's so crazy? I, I, I do, in a sense for a while fell in that same boat as well mm. so i've always i don't know it's really weird because my, my my dad and like my siblings they're my, my brothers and stuff they're like more so like they can take care of the family you know I've, I've grown around that type of thing so mentally in my mind i feel like sometimes i'm not prepared because i feel like i need to be fully like able to do that mm -hmm. and then as of late i just realized it's like it's always good if you could find a significant other can build with you, right, mm. right, right. That's really cool. So, yeah, for a while, I definitely was thinking, like, definitely mentally just like that for sure. Right. Um, and I feel like now I'm starting to see, like, if you find a significant other that's a female that's supportive with you and, and kind of build with you or even, like, help you out mm. and get to there, that'd be great too. Right, right. But I feel like a lot of people, are, a lot of our men in our generation right current generation right now their mindset is like that you know we were talking about this if you know if you don't have that or you're still working on that it's fine just you know just give it some time to grow and if you meet somebody solid that's gonna lift you up then yeah i feel like you know some people need to think sometimes of who they have around them or what what that person can be oh yeah because there are some guys like you know lose something special because they so caught up in what mentally they feel like they're they need to be you know what I'm right saying? So. yeah no for sure i think i've been like hearing more well, some girls are like that too though <laughs> you know, I, you're i'm right. not trying to say it's a guy's thing <laughs> yeah. but there are some girls that are like really caught up in their careers as well so, yeah you know. oh yeah and i think like it a lot of it is just like a lot of like black and white thinking of like oh if i'm in a relationship i lose time like they're gonna hold me back type vibe but like you're saying like if you're able to like build together i think like right a lot of times um and partners opposites attract and so hopefully your partner has like qualities that maybe you're not so good at like if i'm not that organized hopefully my partner is a little bit more organized but then again i gotta say mm -hmm. um depending on your lifestyle mm -hmm. you have to date someone that can understand your lifestyle as well oh yeah right like you know if you're dating someone that's like a little bit more out there moving around traveling a lot just kind of like doing a lot sometimes right you gotta be a confident woman you understand because i feel like there are some downfalls where like it's not just with women right. it's also with guys right where right. like they'll date someone that's a little bit more lit or have a lot going on and they can't handle that or they're trying to like anchor them from not doing stuff right you know there are some people are like that and right. i feel like you know if you're dating someone like i have a friend she's like doing a lot and She's, like, doing show, her, her clothing stuff, whatever the case may be. But I told her, I felt like the dude she was with wasn't, like, ready to be with her like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's kind of like it's a bit slowing her down, too. Oh, you know? yeah, that and makes And I felt sense. like I told her straight up, like, you need to find someone that can keep up with your lifestyle. Yeah. Or can understand your lifestyle, right? At least. At least. Because yeah. it's like... You know, even when I went to CCAD, when I was in art school, my professor at the time, he told me stories of how a lot of girls got their careers ruined due to the dudes they dated. Because we went what? to, like, you know, like, you're from Columbus, Ohio. Some girls would give up, like, a job opportunity in, like, New York or somewhere because their dude just wasn't ready to move to New York. Oh, my God. That's 
You oh feel God, me? That's like wild. You know, so I hear those type of stories, and I'm like, I don't want to live a what if story, right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he was like, yeah. So he's like, I've seen even my, you know, the first professor. He's like, yeah, I've seen a lot of just dudes ruin a lot of these girls' career path because they like they're not ready to move to a big city. Right, right. So. And then it's also like on the girl of like know your worth, right? Like always know your worth. Yeah, for sure. like. I just can't imagine looking back and being like, oh, I didn't take this opportunity because I was in this relationship. Maybe it would. But to believe it or not, it really happens a lot. Yeah. It's not just like it happens so much. I see it all the time. Right, right. Because you know? like, right, we all like, we all want love. Like we all want like to be in like happy or not everyone, but like a lot of people want to be in like happy picture perfect movie-esque relationships. And so we'll kind of like do whatever to like get there. But Right, yeah, like you said, like looking back, I don't want to live a what if life. That is you know, crazy. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like that's why I always look like if you know you're looking for a partner or somebody, it's like find someone that really like understands and can see your vision, and 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 and, and you can also understand their vision as well. Like it's not a two way street. Like I mean, I'm sorry, it's not a one way street. It's definitely like a two way street. Like understand where, you know, what this person you're dating. Um, can consume mm. what can you give out mm -hmm. because sometimes you might give out too much and they can't consume it all right and then right. that becomes a problem and then it's just it gets very conflict and then the you know i try to stay from toxic relationships you're not I, into toxic I'm girls not into toxic None of that shit. <laughs> did you used to be into toxic no i just i don't know i just <laughs> the last it's just like you know maybe in the past a lot of things was just like I got to say, like, it's totally different for me mm. because, like, my parents are still together. Mm. Feel what I'm saying? Like, my mom waited 10 years. My dad was a prisoner of war for him to get out. Like, mm. like my parents come from real love. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, my mom seen terrible habits my dad had, mm. you know, from, like, drinking a lot, gambling, you know, smoking. My dad was a, pi a pilot. He was a captain, you know. Oh, wow. And, and it's just, like... My dad, when he moved to America, he told me the story. When he moved to America, he realized how much of a responsibility he had on his plate. He said as soon as he stepped foot in America, he quit He quit smoking cigarettes. He quit gambling. He quit caffeine. He doesn't like really oh drink gosh. coffee like that. He drinks a little bit here and there, but like he didn't want it to be like a consumption he needed all the time. Right, right. right. He needed to be more focused because that's a lot to take care of seven, eight people. You know, oh, yeah. so I feel like, you know, when you grew up around that type of thing or you see your mom being around and like you see real genuine love, mm. um, it's a rare thing nowadays. Not every, you know, people, everybody have that, you know, parents that are still together. Yeah. And sure. I feel like sometimes like some people upbringing is just a lot different from myself. And then, you know, maybe it's just a little bit more into toxic traits. Yeah, you know, so. yeah, for sure, for sure. So now I'm trying, I'm more so like, you know, if it's bad or if it ain't like, if it's something I don't need, I just walk away from it. Mm -hmm. you know, whether it's like a, a, a relationship with a girl or even um, a friendship with your homeboys or homegirls. It's like people measure friendship too much due to time. Um. And sometimes you might meet somebody that you just gotten to know and became friends recently and... They might fuck around, be more solid than the ones you knew since you was a kid. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So yeah. people measure too much of that in time, and I feel like sometimes it's always you got to know when to walk away, right, Ooh. or when to like, you know, keep it. Like, okay, like I'm not gonna make it, you know, make it seem like I don't mess with you. I just gotta keep my distance. Right, yeah. right. Just like slowly drift. Yeah. It's just yeah. like self care. You gotta love yourself enough to be able to see that, like. You know, that's, that's a big thing with me growing up. Like, I grew up around, most of my friends growing up didn't go to college. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, you know, selling drugs. Do, doing things where I'm like, all right, you know, and I just realized that, like, the, getting in trouble, right. robberies, all types of dumb shit, right? And I just realized, like, you know, these are still my boys at the end of the day. Like, right. at heart, I love them, but we just on two different frequencies. Like, I don't, I don't, I want to see something out of myself. I want to see the world. For sure, for and, sure. Um, 
And I got to be solid enough to know who I am. Because there are some people that get caught up. They're trying to be around that circle and be involved in whatever X, Y, and Z, you know, whatever they're doing. Yeah. And they get up caught up in some shit that don't don't need to be doing. And they right. lose the opportunities and, yeah. and whatsoever. So, yeah, you know, got to understand yourself. That's yeah. What yeah. No, for sure. I think more and more, like, especially in this just, like, stage of life, I've, like, for the first time been experiencing a lot of like oh i don't think this friendship is serving me or like i'm able to like point out like oh maybe these like traits in a guy aren't like what i what i need like what i want like yeah. i don't think it is indicative of like maybe a healthy relationship and like i'm past that we're past that now yeah. and so it's, sometimes it's like the physical side is like it can only do enough mm -hmm. like you might meet someone's like damn like might be the girl like damn she looks so cold but she's so oh man <laughs> but she's so bad for me right like, she's just so bad for me right right yeah. you know taking things kind of like full circle um and just like speaking about like your philosophy on life right now like where do you want to take things like what are like some like feelings you've been having about life i guess yeah <laughs> feelings about life i think my life right now it's like i'm just going with the flow I'm just Ooh. doing whatever that makes me happy. Okay, yeah. I'm um, not worried too much about others anymore. Not like a s unselfishly saying, but I'm just like, I got to focus on like my goals and what I need to get done. And I have so many things I want to accomplish. Right. And I just feel like when you stop caring about what other people think, you just go ahead and do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it's like, being in LA is just so like, it's it's such, not just LA, but I would say like, just any big city. Mm. It's super, it can be superficial. Like, oh, what can you do for me? Or who do you know? Or any of that X, Y, and Z, and right. blah, 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 blah. And even with now, like, understanding about yourself and like how these brands look at you is like, what you're following, who's this, 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 and that. And then, you know, you, know, you can't even get mad. It's just a business move. Right. So I think what I do is, like, lately I've just been looking at life, like, just more open-minded and not mm. taking things too serious. Ooh, yeah. Right? Like, if there's a brand that I'm trying to work with and they end up going with someone else because that other person probably has a little bit more of a bigger following than myself or done collabs with so-and-so, mm. I'm not even mad. I'm realistic. Like, okay, well, they want that person. Right. And, um, you know, so sometimes you just got to realize, like, that's just how the cards are dealt. Mm. You just got to know how to play your cards when it comes your way. Like, oh. not, like, it's like a life is like a, a gamble. It's like not every hand you're going to win. Yeah. But when you have that winning hand, do the most with it, right? Yeah, lately I've just been going with the flow and enjoying life, not trying to let shit stress me out. Um, I feel like when my mind is a little bit more on the healthier side, I, I, I tend to make more cooler stuff. Right? Like, I'm like, okay, I'm like, but when I'm not feeling a certain way, it's kind of slowing down and dragging down some things. But as of late, like, I don't know, last week was amazing. Like, I, I went to New York. Yeah, New York got, Fashion Week. I went there, like, on accident because I had a, um, I had my friend had a birthday. So his girlfriend setting up a surprise birthday party for him in Philly. Oh, fun. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to New York and just be out there for a little bit, uh, handle some stuff. And I had a collab with Alpha Industries, and that went oh, yeah, really well. That. And then right after that, I had a meeting set up with the Marathon uh, Clothing. So um, I got the collab through the hype. So wow. just having that moment about that whole moment and then just thinking about Nipsey and all that stuff was like, fuck, mm. this, this, is, this is really about to happen. This is really dope. Sometimes we don't realize... How blessed we are and how um you know, how other people's situations is worse than ours so mm. i feel like the more you focus on how blessed you are and, and and what you're meant to be here to do it can help you out a little bit like everything i've been working for like brought me here and like brought me into this room and so it's kind of like oh this is all like meant to happen and it i swear know? that's what i look at life i look at life as everything is meant to happen yeah. yeah oh yeah. i love that yeah um and so for the people if they want to find you on instagram is that the best yes, place um, instagram um made by ngo is my instagram yeah and then be sure to check out every single instagram in your bio because i noticed oh, yeah, all yeah, of them yeah, 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 I have yeah. Like, you know i got nothing grows overnight made in code gallery i'm about to do the source by ngo which is like vintage Ooh. 
Ooh. do some parties called Close Friends uh, with I my homies. That. I got to drop this Friday. Hopless Con is coming up. That should be really fun because they got Cynthia from Cactus Plant Flea Market. Oh, she's the She's the creative director this year for Hopless Con, so I'm really hyped about that. Oh, yeah. Dope. Okay, wild. Well, I'll, I'll come out to Close Friends. I might go to Complex Con. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. This is great. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I thought it was really cool. Like, yeah. Really, really, really nice to just come in. Just yeah, find Khan on everything he listed. You guys can find Pukuki Pod on all social media platforms. We're on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Um, and then me at Hannah Cat. So yeah, that's it. Catch y'all next week. Right, Bye. Peace.